Hi everybody, this is the Trig 2, uh, this is the Math 30-1 Trig 2 review. This is question 1C. We are going to solve this equation, uh, but before we got to consider that, we got to consider, hey, this is the domain that we're looking, we're looking in, okay, for our solutions. And this refers to a negative half rotation and then a positive half rotation. So we got to keep this in mind when we start looking for those answers there. And so here we go. 5 sine squared of theta minus 4 sine theta plus the cosine of 2 theta. Now, this equation has got two very big problems with it, okay? The first one is that we've got two different tr uh, trig functions in there represent. Now, unless I can factor those apart, I can't solve this, okay? I'm kind of stuck. But an even bigger problem, because even if this was uh, a sign here, because the arguments are different for the trig functions, that's an even bigger, well, I don't know, I don't know if it's, I can say it's an even bigger problem, but it's another problem here, okay? I need these all to be theta. Now, what that means is this this one right here, this term has got two things going for it, uh, going against it here. It's first of all, it's a cosine when it should be a sine. It's a two theta when it should just be a theta. This is the one that's got to go. What I would like to pull out of that is just an expression that has sine in it. Well, what's fortunate for us is that the cosine of two theta actually has three different um, three different identities that it's equivalent to. So we're just going to choose the one that's all in terms of sine. So this is going to become 5 sine squared of theta, okay, minus 4 sine theta, plus 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta equals 0. That right there, if I'll cover up everything else here, this right here is the cosine of 2 theta. Now what I'll do is I'll put these, put these together here. So 5 sine squared of theta minus 2 sine squared of theta, there's my 3 sine squared of theta. Minus 4 sine of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, uh, I stare at this problem here. I've, I've dealt with the, the issues that make this hard to solve. Now I'm at a point here where there's, there's two levels here. There's the, the algebra level, there's the trig level to the problem. The first one I'm confronted with is the algebra. I've got this quadratic expression. And I know from past experience that to solve a quadratic, I have to reduce it to linear factors. Like I gotta factor this. So I know there's a couple of ways of doing this here, but I think you're gonna see from experience that in most cases, I can really just uh, sorry, just guess and check this pretty easy. Like notice that there's a one over here. I know that this has to be one and this has to be one. Okay? It's positive, meaning these two have to have the same sign. And this middle term here is negative, so I, I know that those are two negative ones. I don't even have to, to really think about this. I know that. Now, 3, 3 can only be broken down into 3 and 1 as prime, fa uh, as its prime, sorry, not, not as prime factors, but 3 is prime. So this becomes 3 sine theta, and this becomes just the sine of theta. There was really no other way that that was going to fall apart here. Now, but just, just, let's just assume, though, that you didn't see that. Please bear in mind, you can always use the quadratic formula to, to figure out what sine is equivalent to in this problem. That'll, that is always a, a possible way out for these problems here. Now, either one of these could go to zero. I have to consider them both. So first of all, I'm going to set sine equal to one third, okay? And then for that next one over here, I'm going to get that sine of theta is equal to one. Whoops, sorry, I don't, I don't need to say equals anymore. I'm, I've already dealt with that. Now, that first one right there, the first thing we, we want to do when we're trying to solve that is we got to go and, t and take a look and notice that it's a positive sign here. So now I got to think, okay, okay. Based on the interval that I've got, and I know I'm working at a positive half rotation and a negative half rotation, I know that sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. Okay, so that means I'm not even going to move into the negative here. This one's not even relevant in this problem. But now i got to think, okay, one-third. Where does sine go to one-third? Now, this is always sort of entertaining for me because when I watch a Math 30 student do this, I'll often see them stumble on this one because they start thinking about the unit circle and all of a sudden they can't find it. And they're like, oh my gosh, how am I going to solve this if it's not in the unit circle? 
And the answer is you're going to solve it the way you solved all of these problems way, way back in Math 10 when you did it. You're going to use your calculator. Okay? So what we're going to do here, sorry, you got a little bit of a glare there. What we're going to do here is uh, use the second sine function of one third, and we get 19.4. Now, we're going to typically round these things to the nearest degree. So we're going to say that theta or alpha here is, is 19. So for this particular factor here, we're going to let alpha equal 19. So in our first quadrant, that's, that's the easy one. In the first quadrant, we know that theta is then going to be 19 degrees. Okay. In our second quadrant here, that's going to be 180 minus 19. Now, I'm, I'm, this is how I would think this thing through. I know some of you guys kind of fight with this a little bit in your heads, and I watch you do it. Ah, 19 is really close to 20. So what's 180 minus 20? Well, it's going to be 160. But it was one less than 20, so this has got to be one more. This is going to be 161. And so those are the two solutions that I'm getting from this, from this factor. Now, over here, sine of theta is equal to 1. Okay, that's an interesting result because sine, if you think back, take what you know about the sine function, it fluctuates between negative 1 and positive 1. So this is at the very, very peak of its value, which means it's probably a quadrantal angle, which means it's going to be on, on, one, of the, on one of the axes. So let's think about the unit circle. Okay, so again, here's 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So sine is associated with the y-coordinate. So where does sine go to 1? Well, it only goes to 1 at 90 degrees, not at 270. So remember, our domain here is this positive rotation and this negative half rotation. But again, my, my solution only lies in the positive rotation, not negative 1, not in the bottom. Okay, so the only answer here that makes any sense to this right now in terms of our interval here is going to be 90 degrees. And so those are our answers, 19, 161, and 90.